The Pixar Metaverse Theory, Alex Bell. Is the Pixar Theory. The Pixar Theory. The Pixar Theory. Pixar the Multiverse Pixar theory. theory. The Pixar 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 Theory. theory. By far, the most popular fan theory of okay. all time in any media is the Pixar theory. Crazy, I've never the really heard it. The idea that every Pixar movie exists in the same cinematic universe, and all the hidden Easter eggs referencing other Pixar movies are actually carefully crafted hints that can be used to explain how all of these very different movies exist in one universe. It was okay. created by John Negroni and has since been restated and added on to by hundreds of different people across the internet. Okay. And for good reason. I think the Pixar theory is such a fun and clever way to think about these so how you gonna and the amount it? of connections they were able it's to find question. is really impressive. But I also think the Pixar theory is fundamentally flawed. Oh. The theory heavily relies on the logic behind Easter eggs in Pixar movies to construct uh -huh. its narrative. I'm okay. not really going to explain the theory in this video, but stuff like the reoccurring by and large logo being proof of machines taking over, or the fact that the witch from Brave somehow has a Sully carving being proof uh -huh. that she's actually Boo from the future. I'm not uh -huh. saying you can't use Easter eggs in a fan theory. I use them all the time. They are very useful in theory crafting. But if you're going to claim this Easter egg as I like the music to the theory, <laughs> then how do you explain Explain Boo having a Nemo toy in Monsters Inc. Or it reminds me of um, what's old buddy? Ooh. Vsauce. Vsauce. It's a it's a it's a it's a remix of the Vsauce music. These Bugs Life toys in Toy Story 2, or all of the other many 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 references to other Pixar movies. You can't just say, oh, th those are just fun Easter eggs referencing other movies. They don't count. If you're also saying this Easter egg, now now this one is actually proof yeah. of time travel and these Facts. movies being connected. Mm -hmm. Either they're all intricately placed hints about the lore, or they're all just references that don't matter. You can't have it both ways. Mm -hmm. And if we're mm -hmm. being honest, 99% of Pixar Easter eggs are just references that can't be explained by any in-universe reason. And look, I'm not trying to ruin anyone's fun here. I know most people already know this and still choose to enjoy the Pixar theory right. just because it's a fun way to think about these movies, even if there isn't actually any hard evidence. That's at least how I enjoy it. But what if I told you there was another way to connect Oh, here movies? we go. A way that doesn't just rely on tiny background Easter eggs. An alternative way to look at this theory based on actual, concrete, indisputable mm. evidence of these characters existing in the same universe. Okay. Evidence that I have never seen even mentioned in another Pixar theory. That must sound too good to be true. Right? Alex, boy, there have been hundreds of different the theories of trying to connect these movies over the I years. Love, I love How could Alex, there possibly bro. be anything else to say? Well, what if I told you we've all been looking in the wrong place? This is Alex Bale's Pixar Metaverse Theory. I'm not calling it Alex Bale's Theory, by the way, so that if all these other Pixar Theory channels start covering it, they, they gotta give me credit. Gotta, gotta okay, give him, yeah. <laughs> Oh, all the bloopers are movies. When right, show them Pixar was first starting out, they used to include these little bonus segments during the end credits of their movies. Speed, marker, and action. Are you saying I'm stupid? <laughs> <laughs> marker. Woo! <laughs> Should that just be part of the movie now? These were bloopers where they would reshow scenes from the movie, uh -huh. but the characters would suddenly forget their lines or mess up and break character. Clever. It's, it's, it's clever as hell. You idiot. It's Sullivan, not Solomon. What? You're messing up the scene. Sorry. I'm never gonna work in Hollywood again. <laughs> <laughs> Does this mean we can break for lunch? <laughs> what? What's so funny? Woody! It's something you'd expect from a live action movie with real actors, but these are obviously animated movies with fake computer generated characters and environments. Meaning the creators went out of their way to make these fake bloopers just to make the movies feel more real. They even sometimes show the crew filming them. Now obviously these are not canon. They're just funny gags where we get to pretend Wait. like the characters are real actors on a real set. Are they it's all something the that same other scene? animated movies have also done. 1527 take one. Roar! That's close as I can get right now. <laughs> I'm on a seafood diet. I eat, I see seafood. Never mind. <laughs> Cut. But if that's the case, if this is just a random throwaway gag for the Appreciate credits, it, and not something we should actually think about, then why did the creators go out of their way to make the crew filming a Bugs Life also bugs? Actually, it wasn't even my idea. He's watching. 
Whoa. It's a weird detail to include for such a quick little nothing gag, right? Yeah, right, right. But this detail has some very interesting implications for this weird little meta alternate universe where all the characters are just actors who know they're filming a movie. Like, this has to mean that in this universe, these actors are actually real talking bugs, right? Like, I first assumed maybe the implication was that they were just like humans in bug costumes, but there's no way the crew would also, also be weird. in yeah. costumes too. So this means that they must all be real talking bugs. We are looking at a universe where talking bugs are making movies about talking bugs mm -hmm. with tiny cameras and tiny film equipment. Yeah. And they're not alone. The Monsters Inc. bloopers also feature monsters damn, on the crew filming damn. the movie. And yeah. While we don't fully see the crew in the Oh, toy that's story a bloopers, toy. That's a toy. The and they seem yeah, to have human can, hands. Yeah. They're the same size the as the toys. Hand. And in one shot, if you look closely, we can see enough of the arm to reveal it as the that's exact same hand. weird bendy elbow that Woody does, meaning they are all actually toys. All of these fictional in-universe movies are being filmed by the actual talking sentient creatures from their respective movies, okay. meaning talking bugs, toys, and monsters all actually exist in these weird meta blooper universes. Yeah. Okay, that's pretty interesting. but. Why does any of this really matter? At the end of the day, these are still just little bonus segments that exist in their own separate continuities. It's not actually canon to the real Pixar universe that we care about. And that's true, but unlike the Pixar universe, these bloopers actually feature, for the very first time ever, the greatest fucking sound ever <laughs> on my soul. <laughs> oh my soul. Hey, look. Well, that bug, come on, are you ready to go against the hood? Against everything, bro. bro. I, one man versus Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I hear this bug, I swear. One you know day, I'm going to start playing in the cars with speakers. Theme song. Bro, theme, bro. Bro, I ain't going to lie to y'all, chat. When your boy officially lose weight, I'm going to go out to the hood. I'm going to have a Captain America suit on. I'm gonna have a giant speaker. I'm gonna cut this bitch off. I'm like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Hands only. <laughs> Hands only. <laughs> Concrete connections between these films. How did he get copyrighted? Let me try again. Okay. You know, I can't believe you talked him into me. Woody shows up as a crew member on A Bug's Life. Facts. The Bugs show up in Toy Story 2. Facts. And Rex shows up in the Monsters, Inc. bloopers. Facts. And these are not just little background references. These are indisputable crossovers where the characters interact mm. with each other. So no, this is not a theory about how the story in the Pixar movies connect. This is- Ooh, that blood, boy, I just wanna- Fine. I'll do it myself. <laughs> That boy Alex Thanos, boy! I'll show you how to do it, Bill! This is a theory about how the Pixar metaverse, the fictional universe where all of these stories are just movies filmed by live-action actors, connects together. And believe me, there is so much more here than you would ever realize. This boy cold with it. Before we continue, I just want to say that this theory does not replace or disprove the Pixar theory or any other theories about these movies. Right? Just because they acknowledge in the lore that these are just fictional movies doesn't mean you can't still theorize about the fictional movie plots. Also, as I'm recording this, I did just find out that another YouTuber, The Theorizer, did kind of briefly mention the bloopers in his video, and his Pixar theories do get pretty meta. But as you're about to see, my theory goes in a very different direction. And as far as I'm aware, no one's ever actually talked about the literal crossovers in these bloopers. But you know what? Still, go check out his video. He's got some fun stuff. Go ahead and compare it to mine. And check out any- I feel like, oh, the more Alec theory. Oh, yeah. Alex saying all of this. It's like Kendrick Lamar on control. What you mean? It's like he's saying, you know what I'm saying? I understand these theories out there. These theorizers out there. Yeah. But I'm him. Yeah. This is my theory. But I, I feel like I feel like he's giving flowers. I feel like he's giving he flowers. Is, he is. But he like this is this your theory might have this. But mine got did right here. We gotta check out that more theory. Pixar theory I show in this video. I think they're all really cool and definitely worth a watch. Also, now that we're getting meta, we're doing kind of a television theory. I just want to clarify that when I talk about Pixar Studios from now on, mm -hmm. I'm referring to the fictional in-universe Pixar Studios that is implied to exist in this metaverse. I am not trying to make any claims about the real-life Disney Pixar Studios. I am strictly theorizing about fictional lore here. Please do not sue me, Mr. Mouse. Let's continue. Nice way to cover that ass.
So from now on, I will be referring to this connected behind the scenes cinematic universe as the Pixar Metaverse, a term I'm blatantly stealing from Quentin Reviews. We now know for a fact that the world of the Pixar Metaverse has actual talking toys, bugs, and monsters that all coexist and make movies together about talking toys, bugs, and monsters. Indeed. Unfortunately, only these three movies had these bloopers, so we don't really get a ton of information about how this Metaverse world works. It seems like the main difference between the Metaverse and the world of the Pixar movies is that humans are most likely aware of all of these talking creatures' existence. We don't see any humans in these bloopers, but the fact that humans are also acting in these movies seems to imply that they're working together. One of the monsters even says okay. they're working in Hollywood. You're messing up the scene! Sorry! We're never gonna work in Hollywood again! So yeah, humans and talking toys and bugs and monsters all peacefully coexist in this world. I'm not gonna lie. Mm -hmm. I don't know if he's gonna say this, but the existence of Incredibles, right? Mm -hmm. Having superpowers, right? Mm -hmm. Meaning there's mutation somewhere in the human genome mm -hmm. would also support the existence of other things. Like monsters. Like monsters. Talking toys and bugs and monsters all peacefully coexist in this world. And even though we never see it, I think there's a good chance that talking rats and fish and maybe even superheroes all exist in the same world and everyone knows about it and it's not a big deal. There would be some exceptions like the films that depict entirely different worlds, but even if the worlds in those oh, movies damn. are fictional, in this metaverse, I don't see why there can't also be talking cars and robots and even straight yeah, up magical creatures just walking the streets you know if magical talking toys exist i feel like they all could exist Facts. in the same world at the same time peacefully coexisting Facts. and that's where i was gonna end the pixar metaverse theory it's not the most complicated in-depth idea it kind of just explains itself once you think about it but hey I i'm not complaining you know easy theory means easy video i got no problem with that but but what? then right when i was about to record this video I felt a little up, itch in the back of my head. The same itch you get when you Some look chase. at bad mocap animation or an unlicensed <laughs> knockoff of a popular character. The kind of itch that tells you there's something off here. That behind the laughter in the cookie right, right, hijinks right, 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 right. is something profoundly wrong. So I rewatched the bloopers. Also, also, also in Cars, there's a uh, there's a blooper in Cars where the bugs are from a bug's life. The hell is that? Yeah, there's a blooper of um like he runs into the bugs and there are bugs from What a up, Eisen? Life. We just on YouTube for a few for a little bit, then we move on to Twitch. You know what I'm saying? We do it every now and then. Oh, hit it again. Over and over again. For weeks I couldn't sleep without thinking about these damn bloopers. And then one day I finally realized what it was that was bothering me so much. What is it? Tell that us. was this one single clip uh -huh. from the Bugs Life bloopers. Marker. Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> wait. Oh, wait. Stop. Wait. Oh, he swallowed, swallowed a, bug. a bug. Yeah. A bug. So I think I swallowed a bug. I think I swallowed a bug. Wait a second. How? how if, if he's a. If he's if a he bug. If he swallowed a bug. But, but he's a bug. What? In this same clip, they remind us that these are not just people wearing bug costumes. The crew clearly also looks like bugs. But then how did he swallow a tiny bug? Are, are these things not actually bugs? And if so, what, what are, they? are they? And look at their reaction. I think I swallowed a bug. <laughs> <laughs> They're not horrified like he just consumed an equal member of their society. They're laughing the way that you or true. me would laugh if we that swallowed a fly. True. And it's not like flies are tiny in this world either. Yeah. They're the same size as the ladybug. It's an extremely weird contradiction, but I soon realized it was far from the only one. Yeah. Speed. Marker. Okay. Uh. I don't remember eating that. Cut. I can't believe That's this. That's a fifth time. What was that guy in? Sorry, everyone. I, I had that bean burrito for lunch. I had that bean burrito for lunch. Toys don't Toys eat. Toys don't eat. Don't eat. <laughs> Toys have never eaten in any of these movies. The yeah. closest we get is maybe bullseye licking cheese dust off a finger, but that's just tasty. Mm, they don't have internal organs. They, they can't actually consume food. 
this would seem to imply that the actors are not toys. But remember, the off-screen crew also looks like toys. And not to mention, in this clip, there are tons of identical Buzz clones that sound exactly like him, even when they're out of character. Cut. Uh, no, I can't believe that's this. a fifth time. Is that guy in? Which implies they are real toys, but toys don't eat. And why is Rex so big compared to the monsters? Monsters are supposed to be bigger than humans, and much bigger than toys. And why do the bugs look tiny compared to Buzz, even right. though Woody was shown to be the exact same size as an huh? ant? And why is this bird a mechanical robot? <laughs> when everyone else is a talking living thing. And wait, 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 wait. If, if they're just supposed to be actors pretending to be fictional characters, why does Buzz call Woody, Woody, out of character? What? What are you laughing about? Huh? <laughs> Real funny, Woody. Like, wouldn't Woody's actor have a different name yeah, that yeah, Buzz would call them when Woody? they aren't acting? Unless they're filming documentaries. I mean, I could. Yeah. Yeah, I see. I'm, see this is this is boy. Hey, thinking. Alex, you a cold man, boy. What? What's so funny? <laughs> Woody. Huh? Darn it, Woody! None of these bloopers make any goddamn sense, and the fact that they don't make any sense doesn't make any goddamn sense because the creators <laughs> clearly went out of their way to add details to clarify the lore of this metaverse world, while also going out of their way to add details that directly contradict what they've set up. Like literally in the same shot, they're contradicting themselves. If they're not bugs, then just make the crew human, or just don't show the yeah. crew. You can't have both. Or can you? What? <laughs> he going through his brain? Okay. Like what is happening? So. I think the answer to this is obvious. This is all just bullshit. It's a kid's movie. They were just making random Cap. shit up. And I've wasted... Ironic you say that as soon as somebody in the chat said <laughs> Life overthinking so this. I, I acted all cocky in the beginning of this video. Like, oh, I've discovered this amazing new evidence that no one was smart enough to even consider. But... The reason why people don't consider these bloopers is because they don't make any fucking sense. And they yeah, only true. made three of these tiny little segments. We yeah. haven't gotten another blooper in 22 years. There is not nearly enough content here for me to make a proper theory. And even what we do have if is bring full up the cars, of contradictions. Blooper. This whole video has been pointless and I should just scrap it and work oh, on something we know else. You're Psych. Uh, but wow. then I got that itch again. That was a great shot. Right there. That was a I hope. I hope. Alex Bell posted. You literally came in chat and said Alex Bell is posted. <laughs> you didn't take the time to even look at what, what we were looking. At, that was. Mm. Mm. <laughs> As we were. <laughs> Believe me, I wanted to scrap this video and work on something else, but I couldn't shake the feeling that there must be something somewhere out there that gives us just another glimpse of this behind the scenes metaverse world. So I kept searching and searching and searching and searching everywhere I could think of. The Pixar Wikipedia, the Disney Plus spinoffs and short films. I even watched fucking Mater's Tall Tales and there was still nothing I could use. But then I realized I was looking in the wrong place. Pixar always re-releases their movies on DVD, and a lot of these DVDs have special features and bonus content like creator interviews, deleted Man, what scenes, old promotional material, and most what importantly, the blooper segments. If there's more metaverse content out there, I bet you it's on these DVDs. So I bought as many DVDs as I could find and started looking through every single menu item until I found a little something called character interviews what we've arranged to go live via satellite to the stars of toy oh, story oh. woody and this is a freaking creative hello geniuses, guys bro. hello hello the toy story a bug's life finding nemo and the incredibles dvds all feature oh. character interviews let's go thank you for letting us in on the set hi hello this is a set for andy's room it's where all us toys live in the movie oh well you know we really shouldn't give too much away these are interviews with the animated characters talking with real Live action humans trying so to promote smart, their movies. Bruh. <laughs> Come see Toy Story 2! I'll certainly try. This is 100% in the same metaverse as the bloopers, and we now have almost 15 minutes of new content to okay. analyze. So, let's begin. Okay. So immediately, there's a lot of similarities between these interviews and the bloopers. Like the bloopers, the interviews also act like what we are seeing is not animated. It's being filmed by actual film equipment and cameras. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh! Is that a camera? 
<laughs> Dory to go. I'm Dory. Dory to go. And again, even though the characters are presented as actors behind the scenes, they still have the same names as the characters they play. My name is Flick, and I guess you could say I'm the hero of the picture. This will get them into the theaters and droves. Buzz, it's not true. Now, the Toy Story, Bugs Life, and Finding Nemo interviews don't really tell us anything that we didn't already know, but okay. the Incredibles interviews are very, very interesting. What you got? May I say that it's an incredible Damn, pleasure did the to over be here. The Unlike the other interviews, these aren't disconnected video calls. The Incredibles are actually in the they room in with the live-action human interviewer, which is very weird and uncanny looking. Nancy, I love that outfit. Thanks. Elastigirl, good to see you. You look great. But even stranger, when asked about being in these movies, the Incredibles have a very different response. Now that you have finished filming The Incredibles, are you looking forward to getting back to your regular life and settling down a little bit? Um, I didn't really make the movie. This whole movie is a cartoon, you know? It's a cartoon. Huh? It's a computer-generated, exaggerated thing. Unlike every other instance of the Pixar metaverse, The Incredibles claims that their movie actually is a cartoon animated. made about no, their life. It's a cartoon. It's animated. Man, I'm not in the movie. It's a cartoon. Do I look like a cartoon to you? They are very insistent that The Incredibles movie is just a cartoon that they didn't even act in. It was just something inspired by their real lives. Yo, I mean, okay. I didn't really do anything. I mean, they, they paid me a fee to use elements of my life story. We just gave Pixar permission to be inspired by, I guess is a legal term, our lives. Which is weird Multiple because they are they clearly cartoons especially right. when compared to the real life human interviewers in front of them they even acknowledge this in the interviews do i look like a cartoon to you yes mm, kind of like uh, <laughs> huh these movies <laughs> oh, not being animated was the only consistent thing about the metaverse but now they're contradicting that too it's a cartoon it's animated how am i supposed to make a theory about this i've looked through every possible avenue for more metaverse content and only found more contradictions. Look, obviously Pixar puts a lot of time and effort into the world building. Nigga, was that Doc Hudson? Contradictions. Look, obviously Pixar put That is Doc Hudson. Where, where, where is it? I don't even know what Doc Hudson is, to be honest. <laughs> is that Doc? Is that Doc chat? Real life human interviewers in front of them. They even acknowledge this in the interviews. Do I look like a cartoon to you? Kinda. Mm, kinda. Like, uh, uh, huh? These movies not being animated was the only consistent thing about the metaverse, but now they're contradicting that too. It's a cartoon. It's animated. How am I supposed to make a theory about this? I've looked through every possible avenue for more metaverse I like his content ups and, and downs only found of his, more of his contradictions. Theories. Look, obviously Pixar puts a lot of time and effort into the world building of these award-winning animated movies, of but course. clearly they don't give a fuck about these bonus <laughs> behind-the-scenes okay. clips. There, there's no theory here. I, I, I give up. I, I'm sorry. I, I just, I can't. It's always a, I have a theory. Wait a second. No, but it doesn't make sense. These I have award-winning no. animated movies. Mm -hmm. Oh my god. How did I miss this? Pixar has been nominated and won many different awards for their movies, but sometimes during the Oscars, guess who presents these awards? Wow! The Academy Awards! The nominees for Damn. Best Animated Short Film are... And the Oscar goes to... That's right. They do all characters of this? Characters from Toy Story, A Bug's oh. Life, Monsters, Inc., The Incredibles, Cars, and Even Up have all made what? physical appearances at the Oscars. <laughs> They're fucking goaded! And I know, your immediate instinct is probably gonna be to say, oh, come on, these are just cute little gags for the Oscars. They they're don't goated. count. Oh, but my. why not? Like the bloopers in interviews, they talk like they're actors in Facts. a movie. <laughs> they had Excuse to do it multiple but times. I had the leading role. Technically, but I carried the picture. They even show a character interview for the movie Up. So what does this nomination mean to you? Ah, what? What is that? I will explore it now. <laughs> like it or not, these award shows are absolutely canon to the metaverse. <laughs> and the reason why that is such an insane thing Thanks for the is gift because it. they are not the only animated characters at these awards. Well, Frank, Aaron Warner. Of oh, course, it's a tremendous oh, honor to be nominated. Oh, fantastic, Mr. Fox. Mom's got an Academy Award. Jimmy Neutron. 
boy genius. Yes, yeah, I Jimmy. am now claiming every <laughs> single non-Pixar character that shows up alongside the Pixar characters at these awards is now officially a part of the same metaverse. Look, they even interact with each other. Mike and Sully react to losing Best Animated Picture to Shrek, and Lightning McQueen literally talks to Happy Feet. Whoa, look at you. This is the no center. longer the Pixar metaverse theory. This, this Damn, is we now just deep. straight up the, the animated meta movie metaverse Let's theory. Let's go. It's all canon. They're all connected. <laughs> Please explain. Let's go. I'm, I'm hooked, bro. I'm I hooked. see why this mother 52 I'm minutes. I'm hooked. This is great. All right. So uh, let, let me pause for a second. I, I may have just lost a few of you guys there. <laughs> At this point, you might be realizing that I haven't really done a lot of actual theorizing yet. I've kind of just listed off a bunch of increasingly absurd and contradictory facts. And now I've just gone and connected a million other franchises from other studios. Like what, do I have to buy all their DVDs now too? Well, first off, I'm still gonna mostly just focus on the Pixar characters. Technically, yes, all of these movie characters are now connected in the metaverse, but this is still just a Pixar theory. But more importantly, we these are Pixar employees. The rest, the it's okay. Okay, I think I'm. I'm where you at, twin? I'm where you at, twin? Let's see. Let's see if you wait. We are finally done searching for new evidence, and we are ready to start the theory that I've been building up to for this entire video. And that's because in these award shows is a single clip that can be used to explain every single loose end and weird contradiction in the metaverse. A clip that fundamentally changes our way of viewing this world. The clip I'm referring to is the presentation for Best Jesus. Animated Short Film from the 71st Academy Awards. This thing is so heavy. <clears throat> Hi, we're here to present the award for best animated short film because we're animated and we are short. For the first time ever, Flick refers to the Bugs Life characters as animated. We're animated. And at first, this just seems like another contradiction in the massive pile of say, metaverse yeah, contradictions. But this little piece of information can be used to solve everything. How could Flick possibly be animated if he's physically on the stage at the Oscars in front of a crowd of real human beings? And I'm not asking how is this literally done in real life. I know it's all just special effects and none of this is actually real. I'm asking Asking, in the lore of the metaverse world where right. all of this is canon, how could this possibly make sense? Mm -hmm. How could any of these actors be animated when we are shown time and time again that they are real, physical, living things that can actually interact with the real world and require a crew and equipment to film so them? So many different because questions. we're animated. We need answers. we're animated. What does the word animated actually mean? We assume it means just a fake CGI creation, but the word literally means full of life. So here is the actual theory I've been building up to for this entire video. Every actor we see in the metaverse is animated, but they aren't just soulless computer programs. They are actual living things that can physically exist and interact with the real world. Just like in real life, all the characters were created by Pixar to star in their movies, but in the metaverse, Pixar actually somehow physically brought them to life. This is supported by a little comment Carl makes during his Oscar interview. What is that? I will explore it now. <laughs> What the hell does that mean? Carl says, ah, for the love of Pete, which is another way of saying, for the love of God. But I think Carl replacing the word God here with Pete is, Pete is one also of the a sneaky employees or, or to the fact that CEO? the director of Up was also named Pete. Oh, uh, directed uh, by Pete Doctor. So in the metaverse lore, Carl is essentially saying that Pete Doctor, the director of Up, is his God, aka yeah. the person hey, who- Hey, nah, you caught- Catching that is crazy. crazy. That's catching crazy. Catching that is insane. That's insane. <laughs> 
literally created him and brought him to life. So no, this metaverse Man, is not a world what the where hell is all going on? bugs and toys and cars can talk. This is a world where animation studios can literally create life in whatever form they choose. Like we don't know exactly how this happens. Maybe they were grown in a lab, or maybe it's like Toy Story where the power of love and imagination brought them to life. From the little details we do get, it does seem like a computer is involved somehow, but I personally feel like it's probably some kind of mix of technology and some sort of Toy Story imagination magic or whatever. Computers alone did not create Toy Story. Toy Story carries a huge human spirit that shines even brighter than its computerized glow. Again, we don't have enough information to figure out the exact mechanics of it, and that's okay. That's not what this theory is about. My theory is that- So AI clones? That was crazy. Actors can start selling AI voice clones to gain the company under this new deal. That is crazy. That is insane. Exact mechanics of it. And that's okay. That's not what this theory is about. My theory is that in this metaverse world, Pixar and every other animation studio brings these characters to life and uses them as the cast and crews of their movies. And it's okay if you don't fully believe me yet, because I'm about to show you that this idea can be used to explain every single contradiction in the metaverse. So let's take a look. First off, how does Slim swallow a tiny bug if he's supposed to be a bug? I think I swallowed a bug. Well, he's not. He's not a bug. He's a he's magical, animated, animated yeah. representation of a bug. And the bug Living he swallowed is an actual, real bug that made its way onto the bug's life set. This also explains why the toy actors need to eat. I had that bean burrito for lunch. It's because they're not really toys. Sure, they actually look like them on the outside, but they mm. probably have internal organs and all the same basic needs as any living thing. Okay, okay, fine. But why do the actors in the metaverse still call themselves like by their character names, even well. out of character? What a because that's what they were that's oh, come on, boss! That's what they were created well, as. If we're going off of Toy Story logic, when the actors are created, I think they're also given the same beliefs and personality of whatever character they're supposed to represent. Yeah. It's like in Toy Story 1 when Buzz literally thought he was a real human space ranger despite being a tiny toy. I'm Buzz Lightyear, space ranger, universe protection unit. Do you actually think you're the Buzz Lightyear? There's it's because he was made to be that yeah. character. In fact, this is probably also why Bullseye or the Queen's Aphid, two characters that are meant to be just regular, non-speaking animal pets, Bullseye! Go, 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 go! Isn't that right, Avery? Oh, you're such a cute little Avery. Still act like pets even when they aren't filming. Come on! No, no, no! Down, Bullseye! Ah. Oh, Bullseye! Stop, horsey! Whoa! Uh-oh. Towel! Oh, I need a towel! Over here. <laughs> it's because this is the belief they were imbued with. And it makes sense because, you know, if you believe you are a character, you're gonna give the most believable performance. Okay, Thanks. okay. But here's a tough one. How come the bird from A Bug's Life was actually a fake animatronic robot? <laughs> Because it had you know, to be huge. If Pixar can easily bring to life any animated character they want, yeah. why bother building a robot for this scene? Doesn't this kind point? of disprove my whole theory? Actually, it helps prove it. In A Bug's Life, this bird is a regular, unintelligent, wild bird. All it does throughout the entire movie is just mindlessly attack other bug characters. So, if Pixar was to actually bring this bird to life, it, it would, would always have it the belief that it's just a mindless that. wild bird that Even when they're not filming. Yup. But as a robot, they can control yep. it. Oh! This is brilliant. All the time. Even when they aren't filming, just like Bullseye or the Aphid, which would obviously be way too dangerous for a film set full of bug characters. Yeah. Hence, why they have a fake animatronic bird instead. Starting to all kind of make sense, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, what else do we got? What else do we got? Why are the sizes of the toys, bugs, and monsters all so inconsistent in the bloopers. Well, if Pixar can create life in any form they choose, there's nothing stopping them from just creating an extra small or extra big copy of a character. And that also brings me to the Cars version. What? Because it was the niggas from Bugs Life as Cars. Oh, them as Cars. Yeah, they were actually Cars. Ah. In fact, we already know Pixar Welcome, first timers. Makes many copies of the same character. Uh, I can't believe that's this. a fifth time. Is that that is and the two instances where we see these size differences are both jokes that rely on the characters being way too big or small. Hey, Ted! Good morning! Roar! 
the gag just wouldn't work if they were all the same size. So yeah, I think Pixar just created extra small Bugs Life characters or an extra big Rex just for this one gag. Or honestly, this is probably just the same giant Rex from the opening of Toy Story 3. All right, cool. So this theory seems Damn, to fix a lot off. of the weird, small contradictions Except in the blues. But what about the biggest contradiction in the entire metaverse? The one I've been avoiding talking about. I'm of course referring to The Incredibles interviews. This whole movie is a cartoon, you know? They paid me a fee to use elements of my life story. I was paid to allow this fiction to go forward. Man, I'm not in the movie, it's a cartoon. Do I look like a cartoon to you? My theory lines up so perfectly with until... everything in the metaverse until we get to these damn interviews where they're like, no, we're not animated, we're not what cartoons, we're real people just like you. We weren't. It's because they programmed to, to believe they were real people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that would make sense. Yeah. 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 Even in the movie, it was just inspired by our real lives. And yeah, it probably would ruin my theory if it wasn't a damn lie. You lying, deceiving bastard! I didn't even realize that! Rozone claims he's not a cartoon, and the interviewer clearly does not believe him. Do I look like a cartoon to you? Mm -hmm. yeah, Kinda. You because, are. yeah, he's lying. Because they're, they're, they all, all believe they're real. Yeah. Clearly animated characters when compared to the real human interviewers in the room. And the reason they're lying about this is because they're ashamed of the way they were portrayed in the movie. These characters don't look anything like me or my family. I was never that out of shape. They did exaggerate the weight part. I'd rather forget the way I am portrayed in this movie. Pull yourself together! Damn, Not he held that information. I just wish the filmmakers didn't feel the need to exaggerate Jeez. everything. I'm not saying the film was libelous, but our lawyers are looking into it. I mean, just, just listen to how defensive they sound when they're trying to pretend like they're not in this movie. It's a cartoon. No, it's a cartoon. It's animated. Do I look like a cartoon to you? <sighs> the Incredibles is a movie. And the interviewers don't even believe them. They just ignore them and keep asking questions about them being in the movie. It's yeah. really funny. It's a cartoon. Okay, you look really pretty great in this movie. I'd put my money on maybe special training? No. It's a cartoon! Well, you know what they say, the camera adds 10 pounds. This whole movie is a cartoon, you know? There were a lot of scenes that looked quite dangerous in this movie. How'd you pull it off? The obvious subtext of these interviews is that they are all trying to hide the fact that they are the animated characters that were in these movies. So no, this does not contradict my theory. Jeez, okay, knocking them out the so park then, that okay? that is my metaverse theory. We now understand what these actors really are, and we've been able to explain every contradiction. There is clearly a consistent internal logic to these clips. What's the but? but I didn't make this video just to explain away a bunch of inconsistencies and a few random bonus clips. If that's all there was, then I wouldn't have even bothered making this video in the first place. Okay, where are we going? The real reason I am making this theory is to answer a single question. What is the relationship between these living animations and their creators. Now, this may seem like an innocent question at first, but understanding this relationship is key to unlocking the full truth behind the Pixar metaverse. Trust me, you have no idea the how dark turn, it turned the picture upside down, turned everything upside down. That's a great, great metaphor. In the Toy Story movies, the toys kind of view the kid who brought them to life as a god. At least for the most part. And their entire purpose in life is to make their god happy. You're Bonnie's toy. You are going to help create happy memories that will last for the rest of her life. We're Andy's toys, Woody. We'll be there for him. Together. Rhino Stu made a great video talking about the religious themes in Toy Story. I highly recommend it. But is this also the case with these living animations created by the studio? For well, peace that's sake, what yeah. I initially thought, but... The bloopers paint a bit of a different picture. The actors have lunch breaks. I had that bean burrito for lunch. Does this mean we can break for lunch? Trailers. I cannot work like this. I will be in my trailer. Even agents. Come on, monkey! That's it! I draw the line at monkey! Get 
get my agent on the phone! And even other acting jobs that they're able to take outside of the Pixar movies. What are you gonna do next? Well, I'm up for this villain in a toothpaste commercial. Wow, really? that's great! And also, the fact that Pixar took the time to build an animatronic bird for a bug's life implies that there is some kind of safety requirement on these sets. So, these actors are not slaves. It seems like they have the same agency, free will, and rights that any human actor has, including a reasonable expectation for safety. They probably even get paid, which is good because, unlike in Toy Story, these actors need food and probably other basic essentials. I mean, come on, they're even showing up and winning awards at the Oscars. Their life doesn't seem that bad. If they've got that kind of food in the green room, I can't wait to taste what they have at the governor's ball. So yeah, even though they were created by the studio for a specific purpose, it seems like these animations have a lot of say over how they're treated or what they do with their lives. You know, I, I was kind of expecting like a dark twist where the animations would be horribly mistreated or something, but uh, it kind of seems like everything's okay in the metaverse. Unless you're a villain. But then, why do I still feel this itch? Why do I look at these clips and still feel like there's something very, very wrong here? But I, I checked. I checked everywhere. Everything points to them being happy and treated fairly. They have a good life. They even get to accept awards at the Oscars. They don't have Wait, will. do they accept the awards? I mean... Yeah, they, they show up when they're nominated, and sometimes they even get to present the award, so surely they'd be able to accept no, this the, great the, the, honor the, the if they won, right? The Academy rules specify yeah, yeah, that animated so. characters must remain in their seats. Only real people can accept the exactly. award. The Academy rules specify oh. that animated characters must they remain in their seats. The only real people can accept the award. Huh. Is that actually a rule? at the Oscars? Like, they'll, they'll allow them to present the awards, but not accept them because they're not quote-unquote real? Oh, oh, I get it. This is just like a funny little joke they're making. You know, <laughs> the Oscars, they always got these funny comedians coming up with their funny little jokes like this. The Academy rules specify that animated characters must remain in their seats. Only real people can accept the award. Over and over? Huh. Five years later, and a different presenter says the exact same thing word for word. The Academy rules specify that animated characters must remain in their seats. Only real people can accept the award. It sounds like this actually is a rule at the what? Oscars. They this are saying a lot that of even though these animated characters are alive and physically exist in the same world, they still aren't real enough to accept. Imagine, it. what would you do? Like, like let's, let's be real. Let's be real. First. All right. You, the question. You walking down the street. Right, you see a car. You're like, oh, it's Lightning McQueen. Your car looks like Lightning McQueen. That mug look at you. It's like, child. <laughs> 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 what you doing, dude? I'm gonna knock that nigga out somehow, <laughs> <laughs> bro. You gonna knock out a car? I need him in my car. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna get that? Okay? <laughs> I need that. You know how much money? That boy about to kidnap Lightning McQueen. He <laughs> <laughs> got damn right. Put him in a tow truck. God damn. Yeah, damn strap him up. He gonna be in the backyard. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> hey, you gonna recreate the truck video? <laughs> yeah, help me. Hey, like, no, dude. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, you see we no. clip it. I mean, I mean, ka -chow. Ka -chow. <laughs> Oh. The award for their own movie, only real people are allowed to do that. And look, I know these presenters weren't actually trying to carefully set up intricate lore for the Pixar metaverse, but regardless, it's still part of the metaverse, and I'm gonna use it intentional or otherwise. Because just listen to what they're saying. Animations remain seated, only real people accept the awards. Doesn't that only just sound directors. like animated characters are viewed as some kind of lower class in this world? And even when they are allowed on stage to present the awards, yeah, right. we hear a bit racist. This. Now, a small favor of the winner. I, I realize this is your big night, you know, and stepping on the little people is a Hollywood tradition, but oh. please, when you come up to accept your award, just watch your step. Thanks. They're afraid of real people stepping on them. Like, what? Of course, it's a tremendous honor to be nominated with such a, a prestigious group. What's the secret of Kells? These are all cartoons. I thought we got nominated like a real movie. Mr. Fox says, I thought we got nominated like a real movie. He's upset because he wasn't nominated for best picture but instead best animated picture because he knows in this world animated movies and animated They're people are same. treated as lesser than mm. real movies and real people They're you like know which is true the in, the, in the real world oscars 
Oscars as well. This gives a whole new context to why the Incredibles were lying in their interviews. They're not just pretending like they're not in the movie, they're trying to pretend like they're not even animated. Do I look like a cartoon to you? Mm, kinda. The Incredibles they just are want lying more rights. Damn. Damn, animations. They niggas for real. Yeah, and he's an animated nigga, yeah. which makes it double the trouble. The way animated characters are treated in this world, they are clearly not considered the same as real people. Aliens okay, real. so that all paints a pretty bleak picture of the metaverse world. But at least in the bloopers, when they're on a film set, it seems like they're treated pretty well. You know, yeah. they've got agents looking out for them and safety regulations. And yeah, that's all true. But now that we have this new context in mind, let's take another look at that Rex clip again. Mm -hmm. Hey, Ted! Good morning! Roar! Hey, how was that? Was I scary? Do I get the part? <laughs> Thank you. Can I do it again? Rex asks, did uh... I get the part? This is not just an outtake. This uh, he was is trying an to audition. Get in, yeah. Was I scary? Do I get the part? Thank you. And that's strange, Damn. right? Damn. Why do they have to audition when they were literally made for the role they're playing? Like, who else would audition for the role of Woody or Buzz other than the Woody and Buzz they literally created for that role? There's multiple. But remember, they didn't There's only make yeah. one of each character. Oh, yeah. uh, I can't uh, believe that's this. That's the fifth time. What role is that guy in? We see tons of Buzz Lightyears, yeah. all of them alive with Buzz's same voice even out of character. And there were multiple the Woody's. The only reason I could see them needing an audition process is if Pixar is creating multiple copies of the same character mm -hmm. and then forcing them to audition and only one gets chosen. Again, we already know Pixar makes multiple copies of their actors. These blooper characters are most likely just resized copies. Obviously, this giant Rex isn't getting a lot of work after is one scene in Toy Story 3, so it makes sense that he'd try an audition to be in Monsters, Inc. Yeah. And just imagine for a second, if this is true, if you were created with the belief that you are Buzz Lightyear from a Toy Story and created for the sole purpose of being the star of a movie, and then you don't get the part, yeah. the part you were literally created for, the yeah. only reason why suck. you exist. Yeah, the actors who get cast in top roles all get agents and trailers and maybe even prestigious Oscar well, awards, but what happens to the rest of the actors they created who don't get the part? And again, it's not like they're the same as the Toy Story toys who can just patiently wait to maybe get played with one day. These animations need food and probably all the other basic essentials that all living things need. But it's fine, you know, they, they don't have to be in Pixar movies. No one's forcing them yeah, they, to do anything. They can just get a part in something else. Mm -hmm. But think about it. If you were made specifically for one role and only that role, who would really hire you for anything else? Mm -hmm. And it's not like these animations can change the way they look either. When Giant Rex auditions for Monsters, Inc., he He's still looks giant. like a plastic toy dinosaur with very obvious hinges, even though the role obviously calls for a realistic monster. And no, he doesn't get the part. An actual realistic monster toy actor gets it. Hey, Ted! Good morning! Oh. And even when they do get other roles, it's something small, like a villain in a toothpaste commercial. What are you gonna do next? Well, I'm up for this villain in a toothpaste commercial. Actually, damn, no, he's, he's damn, not even damn. casted it yet. He's just up for it. But still, the other aliens act like this is the role of a lifetime. Wow, World really? Time. Great. Because for them, it probably is. Yeah. <laughs> All I had is one little roll. Pixar made hundreds of these tiny mm -hmm. alien copies that never return after this scene. A villain in a toothpaste commercial is probably as good as it gets Bro, for these guys who are crazy. stuck looking and sounding like this forever. It gives a much darker context to this blooper clip where two monsters panic about messing We're up never their gonna lines. Make it in Go get him, Mr. Yeah. Solomon! You idiot! It's Solomon, not Solomon! What? You're messing up the scene! I'm sorry! I'm never gonna work in Hollywood again! Let me do it all Damn. the time! Oh, you're making it worse! They are terrified of <laughs> never working in Hollywood again because they know <laughs> the studio could easily replace them with an identical copy and Bro, their this prospects for finding other roles in this industry are extremely limited. Okay, that sucks, but they don't necessarily need to be actors. Why don't they just get a different job? Who but no, remember, one purpose, this is bro. a world that treats animations yeah. as a lower class. Like yeah. And some of them are tiny animations who have to worry about God getting stepped on. What possible scrum. role could they serve in a society run by real humans? The best they could get is probably working as a crew for other tiny Pixar movies. And that's exactly what we see. 
All the crew members we see in these bloopers are not just Probably random animations. Just, they are characters that we see in the movie damn. they are filming. So either these actors are also working as crew members on the same movie they're in, which sounds unlikely, no, or these the are the co reject copies of actors Yo, who were lucky enough to get the part. God. So now their only option Whoa. is to work as a part of the film crew, which probably pays less and comes with a lot less perks. You think these guys get trailers and agents? No, Remember when we saw Woody holding the slate while they were filming A Bug's Life? <laughs> we try to get it. Okay, tail slate. <laughs> Was this just a fun cameo, or was this actually one Another of the many Woody. rejected Woody clones who did it? That's a defective one. He even got yeah. it upside down. Get the part. Yeah. And even for the lucky animations who do get the part and all the perks that come with it, what happens after their movie ends? Sure, some will go on some to make get sequels, sequels, some don't. What about the actors from A Bug's Life who never got a sequel? Well, we know exactly what happened to them. You know, I can't believe that you talked them into making A Bug's Life too. Oh! I can hardly believe it also, <laughs> but there's a little baby tiny thing I forgot to tell you. Mm -hmm. What's that, Heinrich? It's not the Bugs Life tool. Well then, well, I, I don't understand. What is it then? And action. Oh. Oh. They never got a Bugs Life 2, oh. so the best these former leading actors could get is a small cameo in Toy Story 2 where they're basically the butt of a joke. Actually, wait, these aren't even the same actors from A Bugs Life. They're the extra tiny copies that the studio made just for this one gag and then never used again. These guys are screwed. Also, all of this recontextualizes a lot of the cameos or Easter eggs we see in Pixar movies. Hear me oh, out. They're if extras! They're Oh They're freaking God. extras in the movies. They're not even oh the real my thing. God, bro. They just went and got extra work. Oh my God, bro. Oh. Eight living animations just for this one tiny gag that's barely visible in the actual movie. Then what about the other many Bugs Life toys in the background of Toy Story 2? Are these just lifeless props, or are they actually living animations? I think every time we've seen a toy Easter it's egg from another animation. movie, it's actually been one of the many animated Damn, copies who are only able to get acting work as a silent background Easter egg. Remember, Damn. none of these animations are being forced to do anything. They have their own free will and rights. They don't have to work on the crew or do these demeaning Easter egg roles, but, they but choose to. what else can they do? They need money to buy food, but they're made in a way that makes them only useful to the Bro. Pixar studio. Animated They've got lives the system matter. rigged so that no one's being <laughs> forced to do anything, no laws are being broken here, but they aren't really given any better options. There's even a really distasteful joke that was removed from new releases of the Toy Story bloopers that's clearly a reference to the casting couch. Prospector, how about you? And so you two are oh. absolutely identical. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, I remember this. You know, I'm sure I could get you a part in Toy it Story 3. I'm Yo, sorry, are we back? Oh my oh, god. Oh, hey girls, lovely talking with you. Yes, any time. They're trying to finesse a scene. Oh my god. No way. That, he was trying to finesse him. And he was trying to, yeah. Yeah. If you'd like some tips on acting, I'd be glad to chat with you. All right, off you go then. It's hard not to see the obvious parallels between this and the real life problems in the film Ooh. industry. Oh. But unlike the real film industry, the actors can't unionize and strike for better rights because the studios they can just no create rights. copies yeah, of the exact right. same actor to replace them. That's the insidious thing about these bloopers. They show all of these actors laughing and having a good time on set. Oh, everyone's friends here. But it's all to hide the corrupt reality behind the scenes. That's, That's the itch I've been feeling this entire time. It's probably why the in-universe Pixar Studios' first movie was Toy Story, a movie that more or less shows us how these actors were created. Except Pixar betrays all these toys as happily subservient to the humans who gave them life. Over in uh -huh. that house is a kid who thinks you are the greatest. You are his toy! We're Andy's toys, Woody. We'll be there for him. Together. They don't mind that this is their whole purpose for existing. They love their humans and would do Fat anything cat. for them. Cat. They don't even need food. It's great. Cat. You don't need to think about how we treat our animated cat. actors. Remember how they They're did see it? They're a great time in the bloopers. They love their life. Look, everyone's joking around. Oh, they did see it? Great buzz. They're all happy. It's great. It doesn't matter. Don't think about it. Don't think about it. <sighs> and that is the Pixar Metaverse I freaking theory. love it. <laughs> fails Pixar Alex Metaverse fails. theory, Can't okay? I, I came up Can't with this theory. That you gotta part. give me credit if you want to just restate it in your YouTube videos or your TikToks, okay? Respect.
All right, oh, there you go. Oh, oh, that oh, is oh. my version of the Pixar theory. Mm-hmm. Who knows Knowing if any Alex, of this was actually more this. ever intended by the creators. I love it, but though. either way, the implications are there, and I think it's fun to think about regardless. I am no longer the SpongeBob theory He's guy. The theory I am guy. now the meta theory oh, guy, the meta theory. pointing out how every movie or show is actually a movie or show about filming that movie or show. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's meta! It is funny how many of these properties have a secret meta layer to them, and and I wouldn't be surprised if I ended up making more theories about other topics essentially saying the same thing but you know it'll still be different and unique every time uh i I know i promised my next theory would be the big final spongebob mega compilation that reposted all of the old theories but with new evidence and a bunch of new mini theories you know i I was originally hoping that that would just be an easy cash grab video where i could just recycle (laughs) old content uh but it turns out i actually have a lot more to add to that than i thought yeah the the new bonus content alone in that is actually bigger than several full Spongebob theories combined. So that video is going to take a little longer to get out. Plus, I wanted to post a theory sooner after the big break I took to make Don't Feed the Muse 3. Uh, but but, but what else can I say? Um, thank you for the support on the final episode of Don't Feed the Muse and my film going on, which ironically has a plot that's very similar to this theory. Uh, so go go check that out. I am currently working on my first ever Uh feature film. Uh Probably won't have any news about that for Uh a while. Honestly, it'll probably just be like Uh-oh. theory stuff on this channel until then. Yeah, I don't know. I got two other non-Spongebob theories coming out. They are okay. really fun. Uh, what else? What else? Um, if you want to support me, I got merch. I got Patreon. You Give can get merch. access to Give videos early, behind the we'll scenes be content, and sneak peeks at future theory topics. I've already announced all the upcoming Spongebob mini theory topics on there, and I just announced one of the non-Spongebob topics I'll be covering in the future. Let's Thanks go. for all the Shut support on both the films and the theories. I will see you next time. All right, before we end, full screen. Oh, whoa, 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 Get ready. Whoa. This is the Pixar Metaverse See Theory. The, the uh, theory, sorry. <laughs> Wait, oh, it's an Alex Bell meta theory. This is a meta. He, nigga, he's brilliant. He's brilliant. Do you realize what he just did? Metaverse theory. The, the uh, theory. Sorry. <laughs> what? What did I say? I, I said Siri. <laughs> All right, let's roll again. And action. Whoa! Yeah. See what we're doing here. <laughs> can we can we use that one? Okay, He's planting evidence. Is a sneaky little reference to the fact evidence. that the director of Up is also named Alex. Oh wait. Oh. <laughs> I said Alex. Because in reality, he would just be alone. Yeah. He would just so be essentially, alone recording that. Essentially, he's about to meta the meta. Okay, let's keep going. Kind of like how he did with the SpongeBob. Yeah. He had a whole the underlying stuff Let's go again. It. Let's go again. Woody shows up as a crew member on a bug slide. The bugs show up as toy... St- Excuse me, can I can I help you, Goose? Get out of here. <laughs> and why is Rex so big compared to the... They did the oh, yeah. sp- Hey, why is everyone laughing? What? Oh. <laughs> yeah, Who did this? That's a W Which for Alex right there. Did this? <laughs> cool, yeah. Did we, did we get it? We're all done? Awesome, awesome. Please help me. Please help me. I'm a prisoner here. They're forcing me to do this. Please help. Yeah, I knew it was something. My dog.